Hi everyone, Isaac here from Norworld. So today, I'm gonna to walk you through our latest 79 series build. So this one we've had for about seven months now. We got it about Christmas 22. Um, you would have seen it on some photos, on some video, on some quick stuff we've chucked up, but it's a 70th anniversary dual cab. So the Land Cruiser 79, we love them. We've got six of them in the fleet. Two of them are the 70th anniversaries. This was one of two that we bought in 21 as investments or vehicles that we were going to hold on to the f for the future whether it was going to be a demo car or we were going to build them and sell we didn't know i was just lucky enough to secure two of these vehicles both in north queensland and then i said look i'll grab them i'll sit on them i'll see what we can do and then we'll go from there so about june july last year caleb and i we'd been talking we'd had a couple of beers one friday night we we're on the phone and he said what are you doing with that 70th i said well i don't know what do you want to do? He said, let's build something. He said, I need a car to drive for a couple of months. You need to build that car because it's wasted sitting in a garage or in the shed in Brisbane. So let's do something. And then I thought, you know, what do we do? How do we build it? We've got a coiled 79. We've got a 4.2 J-Max Leaf Diff uh, GVM 79. We've got the single cab, which we've built. We've got um, another uh, 79 with like a J-Max 3.9 kit in it. So, you know, we've covered all the bases. We've got the bull, portals, extension, auto, all the fruit. So we've ticked a lot of boxes in what you can do with the 79 series. And so for this one was like, well, what's the most logical thing? We thought, you know what? Let's just do the J-Max 449 Super Chassis on this one. 4495 GVM, four ton tow, whole new rear clip, four inch lift, 35s, brake upgrade, ticks all the boxes. Great for what we want to do with it. Steve uses a tow vehicle, a touring vehicle, a camping rig. You know, we get around, all around North Queensland, the Cape, out west. This thing's done probably 30,000 Ks since he's had it. And, you know, we're loving every minute of it. So, starting at the front of the vehicle, we thought, you know, let's mix it up a bit to the other vehicles we've got in the fleet. We said ATD bull bar, full side rail set up. We did the Pro Touring powder coat. With the ATD set up, it's the dual rail side rails with the indicators. And we've also got the Norworld logo on the side step. ARB intensity lights and the worn winch round out that. You know, we've done the cell fire, we've done the radio, just the standard sort of stuff that you'll see on most of these touring rigs. So performance wise, we've done a DPU tune. So Cookie and the boys in Mackay, they've done the G320, the Torquid exhaust, the DPU intercooler, the Power Talk Vic fans, and we've done a clutch obviously as part of the 4495 kit, and then a few other bits and pieces in there, airbox, um, dual filters. Just the stuff that you need to do. Once you decide to go, okay, I'm gonna you know, chuck a turbo and a big exhaust on in a cooler, there's a few other things that you should do while you're going. Sounds really good, really good economy, really good performance. It's not a rocket shit like my Anvil or the Bull. The Bull is faster than this, but this is an all around daily driver in a manual configuration, it's pretty good. Steve's pretty happy with it. He's not happy that I can smoke him, but again, for what he wants to do with it, it works really well. With the suspension, obviously being the J-Max kit, it's got the alphas, so we've done the alphas with the in-cab adjustability again. This system, it works amazing for, you know, these big heavy vehicles, you really need to ensure that you've got proper shocks. You know, that, you know, suspension and shocks are a very important part of building your vehicle. And we find, you know, at no time do we ever skimp on suspension with these cars. We recommend that you get a GVM upgrade, increase, increase your payload. And then part of that was, you know, for us, we're doing four inch and 35s. We want the best suspension we can underneath this vehicle. Take the weight, make it handle, make it ride nice. Um, wheel tire combo, again, Evo course, you'll see that on a few of our cars. We love them. You know, not everyone loves them. Some people think they're a bit too Euro or a bit too racy, but for us, you know, overall, I think there's not many wheels out there that suit the 70 so well. And then with the Maxxis Razor tires as an all-terrain, not a muddy, they seem to fare quite well on dirt and gravel. Um, and you know, for what we're doing with them, it's very similar to most of the common all-terrains out there. You're not having to worry about rotations and you know, every 5,000, you're not wearing them out. So drive-wise, it drives very nice. It's no, you know, it's no rocket ship, it's a big car. So if you want a zippy little fun four-wheel drive, this is probably not the car for you, but when you sit there and look at it, it says, hey, this thing's built to tour, this thing's built to travel. You know, and for me, you know, this was like the build that we wanted to do for Steve-O. He's had it, you know, he's had a couple of 79s before and I thought, you know, let's build something that's a bit better than what he's had in the past and really just step it up for him. So interior-wise, 
this one was a bit of a, not an open checkbook, but I said to Caleb, do what you want with it, surprise me. Steve doesn't really know what he's getting. Caleb and I just said, you know what, it's their 70th anniversary. They've got a really nice interior, really, as far as Land Cruisers go to start with, but you know, why not just change it up a little bit? So, center console, Bushman 15 litre fridge. We've done the rear wall configuration and we've also done the, the new premium door pods by Department of Interior Consoles.com.au. So those guys really stepped it up and you know bringing out some new stuff for this vehicle at the time. We also done the Recaro uh, Expert M seats and we've also done the Black Duck canvas seat covers. Steve does a lot of four-wheel driving with his kids, goes to touring a bit and you know having seat covers on the Recaros, yeah, you might draw away the fact that they're Recaros, but then keeps it super practical, especially, you know, on weekends, you're doing yard work. We use these vehicles. That's why this car's dirty. Like it did the Bloomfield track last weekend with some friends from down in uh, Newcastle. And, you know, for us, it's not about just having these beautiful mall crawlers show ready. It's build them, drive them, use them, show them off how they're meant to be used. They're not, you know, they're not show ponies. We use these things. That's why I'm showing it a little bit dirty, a little bit worn. It's not brand new. Um, stereo, full focal setup. We've done the Kedwood head unit. We've done the, H the HEMA HX1 up there. We've got the reverse camera up there. Radios on the console, roof console up here. Again, this is by consoles.com.au. Rowan and the boys, fantastic job. Love their work. We've got all our 79s. We've got something by those guys. The Bull, Anvil, Jono's car in Sydney. This one, it's really, you know, I don't think there's better products out there. Uh, one stone armrest, just a little added feature. Steve likes to drive window down, arm out, and um, that really suits him. Apart from that, just some floor mats. Behind the rear seat, I'll jump in the rear, I'll set that up now, and we'll have a look at that. It's a pretty cool setup. But again, you know, taking what the Land Cruiser does well, making it better, that's what we just do. You know, I don't think, you know, from a touring vehicle, this is a pretty good setup for banking big carries on or off the you know off road like dirt gravel mud it's comfy to do it in okay so in the rear obviously there's a fair bit going on yet again focal sub we've got the amps we've got the red arc bc dc here charging a hundred amp and a drive slimline in behind this panel and this is all stuff developed by consoles.com.au for use in the 70 it's a premium rear wall setup caleb's developed this with those guys as part of his builds for the 70s we've also got the little side storage units with the charging for the kids. Albie and Hamish, they do a lot of seat time in this vehicle, so they really need to be comfy, charge their iPads, charge their devices, charge their torches, and this, you know, store their drink bottles. So behind the wall, yep, it's use of, great use of the space. Usually it's a dead space, so we've really packed this one full. And then when the canopy comes off, we know we've got extra battery power on the car for use of that fridge for the lights, for anything else that we want to run in the car while we're not running a canopy. So yeah, it's a bit hard to wrap it all the way forward with the fridge in the front there, but you can get an idea of what we've done here. It's not cheap to do, but it is worth it if you're looking at doing a lot of highway Ks, a lot of off-road Ks. Really good setup. We've got on a couple of other cars and we rate it really highly. Okay, so we've just looked at the business end of the vehicle. Now we're at the party end of the vehicle. So what's on it, what's included. So what this is, is our Norwell Deluxe Plus tray with one of our deluxe light canopies. So you can see how the tray and the canopy are the same length. So when you get an extended cruiser, we'll do a tray 1986 long, um, and that's to allow for the 300 mil extension, but not giving you the same overhang as a traditional dual cab. So on a normal dual cab cruiser, we'll run slightly longer rear box, rear box, but the wheels are for, further forward. So what we've done, we go, well, we're not gonna make the tray 300 longer just because you've extended it 300 mil. I'm only gonna give you 160 mil on the tray so you get better weight balance, better front rear axle loadings, and the overall finished look doesn't look as long and you know elongated. It doesn't look so you know huge going down the road like a big white whale. Obviously, canopy and trays wind off. You can see the jack sockets here and the sideboards, so we can take this canopy off put the sideboards on we've got that ute functionality that i was talking about with the wiring in the canopy uh, and the car two separate systems we can run a fridge out of the car or two and then the canopy is its own separate unit as well solar panels on the roof switch between obviously the car and the canopy and we can choose which way just by moving the anderson plugs around this vehicle you'll see it's got the new locks by norwell so these are our exclusive locks and these ones also have central locking i don't have the keys on me to run it for you but it's essentially 
A new design for us. We've been working on these since January 2020. So over three years in design, development, testing. I've had some on the ball for two years. Um, we put about 60,000 Ks on that initial first set of locks to make sure that they're gonna last the test of time for our customers. There's no good saying, hey, we've got this great new product, but we haven't tested it. Off you go, let me know how it goes. We build this stuff, we test it, test it, test it, change it, keep testing it, and then once we're happy, we go, all right, we're gonna release it. So the central locking is a new thing that's rolling out now. Um, it's July 2023, if you're watching this video in the future. So it's, you know, you can tell it's Norweld central locking. It even says Norweld on the cover inside the canopy we've got the deluxe light set up so what's that mean fridge table drawer set up with a storage shelf above and you've got this overhead roof shelf there and then on the other side it's a clear easy open space um, with the deluxe canopy there'd be a drawer on that side but you know this one deluxe light works better for steve kids bikes outboard motors fuel when he goes camping with the swags he's got a tent on top which i'll get to in a sec and then he's also got room there for kids swags to go in there Upright fridge, why an upright versus a drop down? For us, it's just about ease of access and also a little bit of weight saving. But we run a second fridge for, you know, for beers, soft drinks, anything large and bulky and heavy. We'll put that in the reach in fridge on the other side. This is our upright fridge for most of the soft foods. Like Steve likes to drive around, keeps his beer and his Coke cold. He loves his Cokes and he loves his beers. So that lives in the car full time, has a bit of water for the kids there. But the upright fridge, the Bushman 130s, they seem to work really well. And then this one, Steve hasn't stick it up. You'll see in some of the videos, the cars, we've got stickers all over the fridges. Steve's a bit minimalist. He doesn't believe in doing that, which is cool. But it's a really good, simple way to sort of tackle the problem of fridge, storage, table drawer set up. Works really well. You can do some prep work there. You know, he's got paper towel, a couple of little bits and pieces in here. He's got a camper trailer as well as this vehicle. So a lot of that stuff lives in that camper and then he just has these boxes that he moves into there. Storage wise, um, you know, he's got a few bits and pieces in here tucked in next to the fridge. And that just keeps, you know, a good use of the space there. One of my favorite products out there, Snow Peak cutting board and knife. Really good setup. Fold it over, becomes a cutting board. I've got two of these. I bought Steve two because every time we go away and I didn't have mine, I'd need a sharp knife. That's why that's there. I love it. If you want to get one, Adventure Curator has them on his online store with the Snow Peak stuff. So really good gear, the Snow Peak. It's not as cheap as some of the other stuff out there, obviously being a premium Japanese brand. But again, it's worth its money. It's good stuff. Uh, this pack out is actually our camera gear pack out and you can see the canopy has got a few scuffs and marks inside. It has been used. This canopy went on December 22. It's done the dinosaur trail out to Winton all the way around. It's done a few station trips. It's done the crib track. It's done the Bloomfield track. We've done a couple of trips to Lakefield in it. So it's gotten around. It's not you know something that we go, oh, it's a display canopy. Don't scratch it. Don't dirty it. No, nah, we're out there. We're using it. You would have seen some videos on our socials of this thing bogged for hours. Um, you know, we've really got out and used this vehicle since we've had it. Overhead shelf, obviously you can figure that, you can move that over. You can run a travel buddy there. We can also option the air compressor on the other side, which I'll show you. And we've also got plenty of, you know, storage in here. If I wanted to run an extra fridge freezer here or on the other side, we've got that room. Coming around to the rear, our famous Norweld exclusive taillights. Everyone wants to know where you get them. You get them when you buy a Norweld. That's the difference with Norweld. We design and develop products just for use on our trays and canopies for our customers. Tool spares on the rear, obviously being 35s, it's a lot of, you know, it's a lot of tire on the back of the car. But again, we've designed and developed all this hardware to work with these big wheel tire combos on the 70s. Also, you know, you can run a 37 on the rear of these canopies, no dramas, which I do on the bull. Power input into the canopies here. We've got our Norwild ladder. We've got the tent and awning combo. So this one's our iCampus Sky Temp 3.0. So this is a four person tent. Sometimes the kids will sleep up in the tent with Steve-O. Sometimes they'll be in the swags, obviously depending on, you know, where they're going, what they're doing. If it's somewhere that's not, you know, croc safe, kids are upstairs, all right? They're in, in the loft apartment. Awning, it's a destination four wheel drive awning from Rafa and Cairns as well. Great locally made product. He's sending these things all around Australia. Really good awning, huge amount of space. 
as you can see, the cover's a bit batter worn. We've used this a lot. It's been, I think we've had it on vehicles for over 12 months since I met Rafa back in 2021. I said, I love your product. You know, we should work together a little bit. And we've started running these awnings on a couple of our display cars. A lot of our customers are starting to run them and they're a really, really good quality awning. Rear draw, stand on all our deluxe trays. Again, plenty of storage. This one's, you know, it's full. We're driving around town with an ax. Why? You never know when you gotta chuck a, chuck a bit of timber in the back of the car, a bit of firewood. So Steve keeps it set up, you know, camp ready pretty much all the time. He's got his winch remotes, which we've used, tire, puncture repair kits, spare charger, heaps of different pieces there, first aid kits, cable ties, whatever you name it. It's great storage area for all that sort of random stuff that you'll see. At the rear of the vehicle, obviously with the J-Max Super Chassis, you get this rear setup, which is your tow bar, your winch mount, everything all in one. Rear winch, do you need one? Not really. Does it help? I've found out, yes. After using it twice in one day for about four and a half hours, I reckon it's one of them things, if you're going somewhere remote, there's no phone signal, you're by yourself, you're solo, that's what you want. Um, you know, a satellite phone's great, but that's not going to rip you out of a bog 40 meters long back to the trees all the way over there so you know for me that's probably one of them things if you're doing remote travel do that rear tires this one you can see the paint's actually worn off the wheel or the powder coat's worn off the wheel so that was from being bogged in some really muddy sand up in the cape um, chasing barra at one of our secret spots and we made the very large mistake of trying to turn around a very big vehicle in a very small space so we still haven't painted it, we're just leaving it like it is, showing people that we do use the vehicles. Again, it's not clean, we didn't want to you know, detail it and show it off detailed, we wanted to show it how it looks Monday to Friday every day. So on the deluxe light canopy, as I was saying, this side on the driver's side is open for storage. So usually if Steve's going away, he'll have a 55 litre uh, Dometic fridge there. We're gonna have a couple of boxes with some kids stuff and usually we've got the 15 horsepower outboard that sits in here as well. And then if we've got the camper trailer, the boat carries the camper trailer, the tent will be on top, or I'll tow the, one of the boats or put the boat on my car, depending on where we're going, what we're doing, who we're going with. Overhead storage shelf, again, this one's got the ladder. He's got an extension that he's made up to test for the ladder because these big cruisers, the ladders that you get with most of the tents are too short. And we've got a couple more fold up chairs there, a table. The air compressor, we've got the, this is our Norwell air compressor set up. So it's an ARB twin air compressor with the airbag man four liter tank. Works really well, great for pumping up the tires. This one we've set up with the app so we can do it on the phone as well to control the, pe the pressure in each tire individually. Um, just something that we've been playing around with. Inverter on this side. So this one's got the Red Arc Platinum package with the 400 amps of lithium. On this, we're testing the new Red Arc uh, Pure Sine Wave Inverter. So this is a new RS3, really good setup. It's, um, it's got some new features, RCD, really clean looking, all black, going away from the red and, red and gray. So pretty impressed with that. That'll be out soon. Um, hopefully by the time this video goes live, these are available, you know, they're coming out. Um, but yeah, really good setup. Love the Red Arc stuff. With the TVMS, the 400 amps, the inverter, everything on this vehicle. We've got ample power for days. We can run two, three fridges, travel buddies, you know, coffee machines, all that stuff that everyone loves to take now. The old days of the LPG gas bottle and the primer stove are long gone, but that's why these big battery setups are so important. You know, it's, it, yes, it costs you a bit of cash, but there's nothing better than pulling up. You don't have to worry about your batteries running out of power. You got cold beer, you got fresh food, everything's working well. Oh, yep, bang, it's 40 degrees, let's grab an ice cream. My freezer's running sweet. So that's why we're doing it. Internal canopy lighting, again, standard on all our wiring packages, and you can see the central locking on this side as well. So really good setup having that now. We've just got it on a separate key fob. It's not wired to the car, it's a separate key fob powered by the canopy. So that means that I've got a separate fob just to lock and unlock, but that means that if the canopy's left parked up in my van park, I can go lock, I can walk away. It's not gonna be compromised because I haven't been able to lock it. And it's also got key lock override as well. So if it is locked by battery, by the fob and then your battery goes flat you can unlock so cool little safety feature up the front here brown davis long range tanks fitted into the super chassis as well water tank fillers on the headboard taps here you know steve's got toolboxes all the way around 
This one's got recovery strap. We think he's got some more stuff in there, so a bit of pieces. Um, yeah, just using that storage for what we need it for. Yabby pots, why he's driving around with yabby pots, I don't know. I'm not gonna question it. He is from the bush, so we'll just give him that slide, eh? On the roof here of the car, obviously Rhino rack, platform rack. Um, good all round setup. It's nice and low, slim. We've got the short mounts on it. We've also got a slim line solar panel and we've got the destination four wheel drive bathroom tent. So this is one of Rafa's first ones that he put out after his prototype. We did give Rafa a bit of a hand with the design of this one. Um, in working out the size, it sort of opens like this and then goes out. There's videos on destination four wheel drives Instagram. So really cool setup. I'm not gonna open it today because We've, um, where we're parked, it's easier if we just leave it on the car. Clear view mirrors, again, these are the PowerFold versions and they're the next gen, so two lenses, but smaller body than the original clear view mirror. We love the clear views, we run them on all the cars that we do have, that obviously mirrors available, and for us, that's a very important feature. When you fit your tray and a canopy to your vehicle, having that extra bit of visibility behind you, because you've lost that rear window access looking through your rear window, those mirrors tick the box each and every time. Okay, so hopefully this walk around gives you a bit of an idea of what we've done, why we've done it, answers a few questions for everyone out there that seems to, you know, hit us up with what, you know, what's this product, what's that product? And also, you know, highlights a different way to skin the cat when it comes to building the 79 series. You see a lot of people doing the same things. And then because we've got, you know, so many ourselves, we've sort of tried to go from very basic, like the single cab through to what the bull is. And then this is sort of up the upper end. It's not a cheap vehicle by any means, but you could take elements of what we've done and then apply it to your own vehicle, especially, you know, the 70 series, such a great platform. You know, they are changing in the future. So if you want something, yep, they're not super comfy. They're not super, you know, super zippy. They're not a town car. They're not a car that you drive around in the city. They're, a, you know, long distance, long-term traveling vehicle. It's set up, tow a good weight, carry you know four or five people you're not going to be super comfortable unless you chuck Recaro's in it but again this vehicle for what we do with it we love it you know it's the 70th anniversary so people think we're crazy for taking one and chopping it up and throwing half the stuff away but you know this is what we wanted to do with the vehicle and for me you know it's not one of the most favorite vehicles we have it's probably the favorite after the bull um but you know hopefully you see this video you watch it give us a like subscribe, give us a comment, tell us what you think about it, and then we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.